Morning folks, it's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. It's Memorial Day weekend. I got the pups and myself out for a morning to do some work. Today we're gonna go ahead and put five trail cameras out on four separate pieces of public property and also get some grapevine mock scrapes out. So I'm gonna take you guys out in the field with us and I'm gonna give you an idea of what I do to get this stuff prepped. We'll see you out in the field. Amazing. Here we are, 6, 10 a.m. on May 26th. It's 31 degrees. We had a really hard frost last night. Definitely not good for any of the apple orchards around or for the vineyards. Just amazing to me. We've already had days of 80 degrees. Here we are, almost June, and we're getting a serious hard frost. Definitely not good for any buds that are already out growing on trees. As the pups and I are dropping in, down into this first place that we're gonna put a trail camera and drop off a grapevine scrape, I just wanted to give you guys an idea um, what I do. First of all, I do all my scouting once the snow's off the ground, the end of February, March, and April. Areas that I had been on public land the year before and new areas that I had not been to. And at that time, I look at the fall deer sign. I use that fall deer sign after the snow to give me an idea of the places that I want to come back and hunt the following fall. So coming out now in spring, this is not the sign that I'm looking for. I'm going off that fall sign. But I'm putting the trail cameras and the grapevine mock scrapes in those areas in which I think I'm going to see the most deer come fall. Putting the cameras out now more than anything kind of gives me a census of are there deer in the area number one and secondly uh, keep an eye on any decent bucks that are in that area. So we're going to go down here, we're going to get this set up and uh, see how the morning goes. Beautiful day to be outside, just being down here to go ahead and uh, enjoy the outdoors is part of the fun. This first place. I'm at the bottom of a little ravine. There's a creek down below me. When you go up the other side, there's a finger of woods that goes up that hill where there's farmer's fields both on the right and left of it. This area, I think, is a travel corridor that's working back and forth from these fields up along this trail and up into this area where there's a whole bunch of bedding, not only a lot of evergreens, um, but also uh, there's quite a bit of thick stuff as you move up here. A lot of oaks in this area, so acorns in the fall. You can have some deer moving through here. So I'm gonna find a place in this area to go ahead and put a trail cam, look for a possible place to identify a tree stand location, and uh, see if I can get a great mine mock scrape up. So I got a possible tree stand location up here in a medium sized poplar. Here's this trail that comes along the side of this hill, with the creek down below us. Definitely funnels them up along here. This trail goes down goes across the creek and goes up that woods uh, finger up into the farmer's field. You can see that this is a place where two trails meet. So right behind me where I put the possible tree stand location, it's almost like a Y. Then I went ahead and I uh, put this great vine mock scrape in right here on this heavy trail, a little bit of a scrape. And then I'm gonna put a trail camera up here in one of these trees. Okay, location one of five is done for today. Along with spraying my shoes before I come in an area like this, one of the other things I like to try and do, try and keep stuff off the ground as much as possible. Oftentimes you're in these hemlock areas, there's old stubs of dead branches that you can hang your equipment from so it's not leaving your scent on the ground. We're in the end of May, I'm not really worried about scent right now, but everything you can do helps a ton, especially when you get closer to season and you're coming back in to check trail cameras. Let's go. 
There's some pretty decent sized tracks right there. The fresh deer bed right there. You can see all the vegetation is up, and then here the vegetation is all smashed down. Here's the second spot today that I'm setting up a trail camera. We've got a tree right here, which is just slightly south of this opening, an oak. Pretty decent size with some branches that we're going to put sticks and hang on stand up in when we come in here to hunt. And the cool thing about this is the fact that this is a combination of about 10 to 12 scrapes that are present here underneath this oak tree. And if you take a look, you can see there's evidence of all these old branches being broken off over a period of time. Especially that one right there. Pretty excited. We're going to put a camera over this for the summer. Kind of get an idea of what we see on it. And uh, hopefully these leaves come back on this oak tree. After two years of gypsy moths, oak trees did not need this stress. Here's all these brand new oak leaves. And we had a huge frost two weeks ago. Last night we had another frost. And my gosh, these oaks right here have absolutely no live leaves on them. Hopefully these other buds are going to pop out. Pups and I just got done setting up the second trail camera. We didn't need a great one mock scrape there. All right, buddy. There's already an accumulation of about 10 scrapes underneath the big oak tree. We just walked from behind where we're gonna come into that tree all the way to a property boundary and then up along the edge of the property boundary and out to this logging road and snowmobile trail. It's really important that you figure out exit and entrance strategies to try to minimize the amount of impact you're having on disrupting deer as you go in. Uh, this one probably when we come in is going to be a rut stand. It's going to be an all day stand. So we'll get in here plenty early in the morning, get set up. Won't get out of here until a good half hour after dark. Pups and I made it back out to the hiking trail after our third setup. Got a trail camera set up and took forever to find a tree in that area. And even so, shots are going to be really tight but still i think it's an area that's going to be really good it's on an island in the middle of a white oak swamp and it's an area that when i came in march was only about 50 square yards that was above the water level everything around it was submerged uh, we found evidence of beds and scrapes in there when we were in there in march and i just found a couple of fresh beds in there right now and there's uh fresh hoof prints in the scrapes so pretty excited about that. I think it's gonna be a great place to put a trail cam in there and uh, we won't come back for about a month and a half. But I know that the way that I came in on this hiking trail right here is not gonna work for the way that I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna have to hunt it. So plenty of time today. Probably when I come in to check the camera middle of July, uh, I'll come in and try to find an alternate way uh, to get into that setup. I also think I'm gonna bring a ladder stand in there because it's quite a ways to get in there um it's difficult walk getting in there in the swampy stuff so that may be one place that i'll put a ladder stand and a little less weight walking in i did not put a grapevine mock scrape in this area because the scrape was already being hit pretty good and uh, there really was no branch to hang it from i'm walking in the fourth area that i'm putting the trail camera today and i just realized but the first place I went to and set up my trail camera, never put my cable lock on the damn camera. But I did put it one stick high, and uh, I'll go back and check it in the middle of July. So I think it'll be okay just to leave it where it is for now. Coming into this place, which I'm really familiar with, this is actually the first piece of public that uh, I ever hunted on. And I've been coming back to it now. This will be the third season. And every season I'm getting closer and closer to seeing deer I never really got to come in here and hunt during archery season last year because I got that big buck on the 21st of October and uh, I hadn't been in here to hunt yet I came in uh, once during gun 
saw some sign I uh, didn't see anything but dough so I'm coming back in today and every time I've been in here I've adjusted just a little bit more and a little bit more trying to get closer to where uh, I see some of these big buck coming out of a clear cut and heading up to some oaks to feed and hardwoods and the opposite direction they head to a cornfield and uh, some hay field so I'm gonna go ahead today and um, see if I can pinpoint a little bit closer uh, where I want to hunt this area this coming up fall and uh, get a trail camera in to start getting a little bit of intel. I mean, disadvantage hunting this area is it's about a half mile in and it's all downhill going in to hunt and it's all uphill coming out. Beautiful area though along the edge of this ravine for sure. That's pretty cool. You got four done. This is the place I've been in the last couple of years. And funny thing is, it's the first year I was in here, I found a place that I thought was gonna be a good pinch point and I gave up on it. And guess what? After hunting in here for two years, I ended up back at that same place. It's right at the transition between some real thick stuff downhill and some open hardwoods and oaks uphill. And it's a place in which three or four trails all meet at one point and three or four trails all take off from there and spread back out again. So, great little pinch point. I'm excited. Got a camera there for the summer. I got a stand location picked out for my sticks and hang on. And uh, I got a great buy mock scrape in there. So, Pups and I are out of here. One more, then time to go home. Mow along. Good job. You guys are tired, huh? One more stop. You guys handle it? One more? Okay, here we go. Started out at 31 degrees this morning. And now we're already up to 64 at 115. So big change in temperature. Pups are tired. I'm tired. It's the last one. Kind of excited to get a cell camera out on this property and that way this one I can be checking every day. Well, we are done for the day. Got that uh, fifth spot set up. Got a great vine mock scrape in. Two locations for tree stands. And my fear came true. I did not have enough service to put a cell in here. I should have brought an SD card camera and I didn't. Uh, so I'll have to come back in here later time and put an SD card camera in. Okay. You guys ready to go home? You ready? Okay. Let's go. Glad you guys came along for the ride today. I was able to get trail cameras up, grapevine mock scrapes up, and figure out some locations for some tree stands on public land. There's still plenty to do, but it's exciting to have some of these cameras out, knowing that next time I come back, I'll be checking data on these cameras to see if we can find deer and hopefully some big bucks. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Hoping you guys have a great day. See ya. Been a long day. Boys and I are tired.